stewed beef tendon, stewed soft shelled turtle with fire roasted lamb and drizzled with syrup, fried goose with vinegar, fried scrub, honey rice cake with mottos, and iced rice wine with honey. Does this menu look very tempting? But in fact, this menu was not prepared for people, but for ghosts. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Historically Accurate. Today, I will continue talking about the food of different dynasties. The menu I just mentioned was recorded in the work Zhao Hun, Summons of the Soul, written by Qu Yuan, a poet of Chu State during the Warring States period. The purpose was to attract the soul of King Huai of Chu, who died in Qing State. Of course, in addition to food, the work also talked about other things to attract the soul, but I won't go into details. The details of this menu are interesting. The beef tendon, syrup, and ice mentioned in the menu were all quite hard to get at that time. Oxen were used for farming, and it was illegal to kill them for meat. The process of making syrup was also very complicated. As for ice, it was not easy for Chu State, which was located in the southern China, to preserve it. It is clear that this menu was for the ruling class, and ordinary people had no chance of enjoying it. During the spring and autumn period and the Warring States period, food was an important symbol of class and status, and class and status were most valued by people during these two periods. Here are a few interesting stories. Hua Yuan, a minister of Song State, rewarded his soldiers with mutton before the war. However, he accidentally forgot to give mutton soup to his coachman, so the angry coachman drove the carriage straight into the enemy line during the battle, making Hua Yuan a prisoner. Duke Lin of Zheng, the ruler of Zheng State, deliberately did not share soft-shelled turtle soup with one of the nobles at a banquet. As a result, this nobleman later secretly murdered Duke Ling of Zheng. The ruler of Qi State had three warriors who were so arrogant that the ruler and his prime minister Yanzi wanted to get rid of them. One day, Yanzi gave the three warriors two peaches and asked them to divide the peaches according to their accomplishments. The first two warriors each ate a peach after talking about their deeds. The third warrior got so angry when he saw that the peaches were gone that he killed himself after talking about his own deeds. The two warriors who had eaten the peaches felt extremely ashamed and also committed suicide. A bowl of mutton soup, a bowl of soft-shelled turtle soup, and two peaches could actually make a nobleman, a ruler, and three warriors miserable. Therefore, it can be seen that in the spring and autumn period and the Warring States period, food already had special meanings to people. Next, let's take a look at the cuisine of the Qing and Han dynasties. During the Qing dynasty, supplies were scarce due to the years of wars. Although livestock such as pigs and sheep had become more common, ordinary people could rarely eat meat. Cattle were still precious since they were essential for farming activities. In addition, the Qing government evaluated cattle every year. If the cattle lost weight, the owner would be punished. This sounds a bit like some modeling agency nowadays, where models are fine for gaining weight. When cattle got old, they could only be butchered after being reported to the government. The people lived a hard life, but as the first emperor of China, Qin Shi Huang had plenty to enjoy. In addition to the traditional Zhou Ba Zhen, Eight Treasures of Zhou, Please check out my previous video on cuisine of different dynasties. There was another delicacy named Xinchun, which was dried meat from the face of an elk, and was deeply loved by Qin Shi Huang. Qin Shi Huang also loved fish, but hated the fish bones, like me. 
because we are both afraid of getting a fishbone stuck in our throats. If I have a fishbone stuck in my throat, I can only blame myself for being careless and definitely not dare to look at my wife with an unhappy face. But if Qin Shi Huang got a fishbone in his throat, he would order the chef to be killed. So all the chefs were very scared. Once when a chef was cooking fish, he thought of Qin Shi Huang's cruelty and got quite angry. He kept slapping the fish with a kitchen knife to vent his anger, but accidentally found that the fish and fish bones were separated after the slaps. So he continued to slap the fish into paste, remove the bones, shape the paste into balls and boil them for the emperor. Qin Shi Huang was full of praise for the fish balls. Later, this recipe gradually spread to the people. This is how fish balls, which are loved by Chinese people nowadays, became popular. In the Western Han Dynasty, from 202 BC to 8 AD, the diet of Chinese people changed greatly. Soybeans became more popular. Rich in protein and easy to grow, soybeans became a staple food in many places. People at that time also fermented soybeans to make doshi and use it as a condiment. A jar of doshi was unearthed from the Ma Wangdui tombs of the Western Han Dynasty, much like the doshi of today. After the invention of doshi, people gradually learned to make other fermented foods in a similar way, and the variety of foods was greatly enriched. Besides doshi, Tofu was also invented in the Western Han Dynasty. Simply put, tofu is made by first grinding beans into soy milk, then putting a certain amount of gypsum in the soy milk and the soy milk will coagulate into a solid. After the water is squeezed out of the solid, the tofu is ready. I talked about the history of tofu in detail in my video History of Chinese Food. Please check it out if you are interested. Most notably, Zhang Qian, an envoy of the Western Han Dynasty, traveled to the West, which is today's Central Asia, and brought back a lot of local foods. Grapes, pomegranates, cucumbers, garlic, celery, coriander, walnuts, broad beans, sesame, peas, peppers, and green onions were all introduced into China during this period. These foods have greatly enriched the Chinese recipe since then. It can be said that the significance of Zhang Qian's travel to the West to China is a bit like the significance of Columbus' discovery of the New World to the Europe. The Eastern Han Dynasty from 25 AD to 220 AD, which followed the Western Han Dynasty, didn't innovate much in terms of ingredients, but some interesting ways of cooking emerged. For example, archaeologists found images of skewers in the murals of the late Eastern Han Dynasty. Unexpectedly, this way of cooking, which seemed pretty trendy at that time, has been passed down to the present. And dumpling, one of Chinese favorite foods, was also created during this period. According to legend, a famous doctor named Zhang Zhongjing found that many poor people had frostbitten ears. So he chopped boiled mutton and warming herbs and wrapped them in dough in the shape of an ear, named Jiao Er. Then he cooked Jiao Er and distributed them to these people. After eating Jiao Er, these people's ears gradually healed. Since then, in memory of this famous doctor, People would eat jiao er during Chinese New Year. The feeling of jiao er has changed, and the name of jiao er has gradually become jiaozi, dumpling. During the Three Kingdoms period at the end of the Eastern Han Dynasty, Zhuge Liang led an army to conquer the barbarians in the south. The march was quite difficult because of the rugged mountain path. His men then proposed to kill some barbarians and sacrifice their heads to make the march smoother. Zhuge Liang disagreed, but he didn't want to hurt morale either, so he asked his men to make dolls in the shape of a head and sacrifice them as barbarians' head. Mantou. 
This food has since been passed down to this day, and its name has changed to mantou. After the Three Kingdoms period and the brief reunification of the Western Qin Dynasty, China entered a period of turmoil for more than 300 years. Surprisingly, food culture developed further during this period. Jia Sixie of the Northern Wei Dynasty wrote a book called Qi Min Yao Shu, Important Methods to Condition the People's Living, in which he recorded the recipes of many dishes in great detail. Compared with most ancient Chinese books, which only provide the least information required, this book can be said to be very generous. One of the dishes, picked crab, was made in the fall by immersing female crabs, which had crab roll in sugar water and letting them drink their fill. Then made soup with polygonum and salt. Put the crabs in the soup after it cooled down and sealed the container for 20 days. After 20 days, open the crab shells, sprinkle the crab meat with grated ginger, put the shells back, move the crabs to another container and keep them marinated in the polygonum and salt soup. It would be ready for eat after a few days. There was also a dish learned from the nomads in the north. The nomads had invaded the south in a big way during this period. This dish was made by slicing tender lamb meat and fat and seasoning it with doshi, salt, minced green onion, ginger, long pepper, Sichuan pepper, and pepper. A lamb stomach was then turned inside out, stuffed with these ingredients and seasonings, sewn up, wrapped in ash, and buried in the ground. The final step was to light a fire to heat the ground until the ingredients were fully cooked, then the food would be taken out and ready to eat. Although the food culture developed, the turbulent period did have an impact on people's lifestyles. People tended to live in the moment. As long as there was no war, the nobles would spend a lot of money on banquets serving delicious dishes and good drinks and there must be someone performing on the stage. Just like I must click on a video when I eat. Well, I feel hungry and decide to finish my writing now. So today's video ends abruptly here. If you like my video, please like, subscribe, and share. If you have any comments and suggestions, you know what to do. See you next time!